Hi, Paul Beckwith. So I'm going to continue in this video on what is going on, on a description of what is going on in the Arctic now. Basically, I don't know if you're a James Bond fan, I am, but uh, there's one movie, um, a Bond movie, quite a good movie, it's called A View to a Kill. Um, I think this uh, the title of this video is aptly can be called a view to a kill, basically the kill of the Arctic sea ice. And the ramifications that this will have on society are enormous. You know, people are just unaware in general in the public of, you know, all of the things that are going to happen when we lose sea ice and we have a completely open ocean and we're going to be in quite a different world as far as climate is concerned and weather, extreme weather events. Uh, people will wake up when suddenly food prices spike up four or five times because there's global food shortages, because the weather patterns have shifted to, so, to such unfamiliar um, patterns that we can't grow food in uh, the quantities that we require to feed the exponentially growing population, which I described in uh, a few previous videos. So just a reminder, I showed this in the previous video. This is the sea ice thickness in the Arctic beginning of August 2017. And the only thick ice is, uh, so this is in meters. Down here we're three meters or about 10 feet. The only ice that's 10 feet or thicker is in this region here and it's broken up and fractured so it can start fing fingering through the channels of the Canadian archipelago and vanish that way. Um, if you compare this to previous years, this was in 2016, a lot more of the thicker ice was there even in 2016. 2015, a lot more here. 2014, okay, 2013, 2012, you know, even in 2012, that was the previous minimum. We had all this uh, ice here that was thicker. And again, basically it's kaput, it's gone. The only ice of any significance is first year ice. It's not multi-year ice. It hasn't survived uh, the, the a melt season, okay? It hasn't survived the summer. It's just ice that has formed in the previous winter. So we're, we're, we're in the soup here, we're in trouble here. This is why I've been saying for ages that we need to declare a, a global climate change emergency. And uh, because the system is changing and any, by any metric, we're in a global emergency. So politicians, the public, uh, governments, the world needs to wake up and act to uh, address this issue. Okay, so this is the motion of the ice. This is the movement of the ice, the drift and move speed and drift in centimeters per second. And it's showing what's happening here. We've got a cyclone here, which pushes ice. So this spreads the ice out. This is spreading the ice out. So the thinner ice at the end gets pushed over warmer water and uh, melts out. The ice is being attacked from above by air temperature, warm temperatures, also by rainfall on the ice. Those events are happening. Also, the water is warm underneath. Wave action around the edges pushes water underneath. Air, water currents push underneath, and the ice is being hammered that way. There's also export through the Fram Strait through the Canadian Archipelago. The export through the Canadian Archipelago was very limited in previous years um, because the ice was thick and ridged here, and it acted as a barrier to stop export. But now the ice is so fractured and broken, it's just going through like a sieve. Okay, um, this is a movie of the Arctic sea ice that shows the thickness over the last year. So what we're seeing here, okay, so we could go up here and look at the date. This is March 2017. Okay, so the ice is still being, is still growing. And then, we okay, now the ice, so there's still, there was lots of export throughout the entire last winter of the thick ice. So this thick ice that we saw in previous years, most of it was exported out through the Fram, Fram Strait. A lot of it is exported right out through the Canadian Archipelago. 
Okay, this is the minimum last year, the minimum in September 2016. Now the ice is growing, October, November, December, the ice is growing. And you can see that you can watch what's happening as the ice is growing. We're still getting export of this thicker ice out here through the Fram Strait. We're still getting some exported through uh, the Nares Strait and through the Canadian Archipelago Islands. This is what, it's also much warmer. Remember I showed you how much warmer it was um, above 80 degree north right here, okay, in that, in that chart. And it was super warm last winter. So now, you know, the ice is reaching its, it's reached at maximum extent and now it's starting to melt out again as we, as we come into the summer this year. And here we are and then it will stop and then it will recycle, okay? So it recycles to a year ago. So the ice is not healthy. The thickness is at record lows. The volume is at record lows and it's just a matter of time. There's the relentless forces all over all around the Arctic are basically a view to a kill is a perfect description of what we're doing, watching what we're doing here, what I'm showing you, you know, watching the destruction of the Arctic sea ice. Of course, Greenland's up there. Okay, this is the big concern. When we lose Arctic sea ice, the temperatures will skyrocket in the Arctic, the jet streams will be further disrupted, we'll get Extreme weather events globally accelerating and taking off, I think a factor of 10, but also we're gonna get huge warming and additional melt on Greenland, and we're gonna get lots of calving events, lots of melt, and this raises sea level, and then that sea level rise, it feeds to Antarctica, raises the, lifts the ice up, increases the melt rates there, and sea level rise will take a big spike after we lose Arctic sea ice. Uh, it won't take long before Greenland, uh, you know, melt ramps up. Um, the doubling period of the rate of melt from Greenland is, is some, something like seven years, eight years, and that will be, uh, we're getting exponential mass loss from Greenland and from Antarctica, and those rates will increase. So, so we're gonna be in quite a different world very, very soon. Again, it all boils down to when do we have the first blue ocean event? Okay, um, this is a climate reanalyzer. If you just Google climate reanalyzer, you can look here. You can see what we, uh, this, these are temperature anomalies from the average long-term difference. This is temperature. What you can see temperature, just looking in the Arctic region, anything green is above zero. Okay, the light blue is just below zero. Look at these areas here, all, of, all green here. Okay, so the temperature above the ice in the Arctic is above zero. We're getting tremendous amount of melt from above. Like I said, the ocean temperature below is also melting it out. Also the export from the Fram Strait, the Nares Strait, the Canadian Archipelago, water coming in from the Pacific, water coming in from the Atlantic. Okay, it's being attacked from everywhere. This is sea surface temperature here. Okay, uh, sea surface temperature anomaly. Okay, sea surface temperature, if we go back to sea surface temperature. Okay, uh, so this is all, uh, you know, up in these purple, up the, these purple regions are up to about five degrees Celsius. So the water is warm and it's melting the ice from all sides. The anomaly, of course, is huge because these areas used to be ice covered before. Uh, precipitation and clouds, there's precipitation right over here on, over on the sea ice and so on. Okay, so this is a good site. Now, look what the jet streams are doing. Okay, we've got this gear coming on here, which is bringing warm temperatures up here, bringing them right up and they're mixing here. So we've got this, this gear pattern going on here, but there's, there's, there's huge, I mean, there, there, there's huge dips, troughs in the jet stream, there's ridges, there's all these loops and whirls breaking off. This is not the jet stream of a few years ago. This is a very disrupted jet stream. About a year ago, I talked about uh, jet stream crossing the equator and you know there was that video was attacked but look what's going on here 
Okay, we have, a, we have a gear pattern going on here. We have a low pressure area, air is coming in and it's looping around here. Okay, uh, it's just mixing. It's, we're getting tremendous mixing from the Northern Hemisphere to the, and this, with the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, look at the pattern here. When the, when the, jets, when the winds are crossing at, a, a, at an angle, um, almost uh, parallel to the equator. You can attribute some of that to monsoonal behavior. Okay, such as here, but you know, it, it's more than that that's going on now. So it's very, very clear. But th this pattern here is, uh, you know, I would say this is the most significant here at the present time. You know, this mixing across the equator. Um, exactly as I pointed out, the mixing across the equator from the jet streams in my video that went viral about a year ago. Okay, uh, this is mean sea level pressure. Okay, so again, if you click on this, this is about a, a thousand millibar, a thousand hexapascal. You know, uh, there's a higher pressure here, 1016. So the blue, th these are the low pressure areas. Those pressure areas get the winds building up, okay? Um, and if I go here, this is showing the temperature uh, looking down on the Arctic. So anything green is above zero. So here we go. We've got warm winds coming in this way, coming off of the land. And uh, going back to the uh, sea level pressure plot, what we have here is so we've got a low pressure area here. Okay, so the winds are going counterclockwise here. The normal pattern would be a Beaufort gyre going clockwise and then a transpolar drift. And as w when we lose sea ice, when sea ice is completely gone, we would expect a low over the Arctic because we'll have water, evaporation of water, we'll have lift of air, and uh, that will create a low pressure near the surface um, so the patterns in the Arctic will completely shift um, when we go to a blue ocean event very soon. Okay, now don't forget the, the snow cover because as rapidly as the sea ice is declining, being, so we have white ice and snow on the ice being replaced by dark ocean. So the Arctic is getting a lot darker. So what happens is, uh, you know, but the loss of ice has been at about 12, 13, 14 percent per decade since the satellite era started in about 79. In that time period, the loss of spring snow cover has declined even more. So this is August snow cover, um, the anomaly. Okay, so it's, a, it's down here, you know, it's dropped a bit, it's below zero, but not too much. This is for August of 2016. If we go to if we back up in months, okay, this is July. Okay, the anomaly gets down here more. This is from 68 to, to 2017. Okay, so this is July 2017. The anomaly gets down even further. Let's back up to, uh, to June here. Look at it now in June, down 4 million square kilometers below um, the below the zero point. If you compare it to here, the difference here from the late 70s to now is about nine, almost 10 million square kilometers. Less snow cover here than in the 70s. Of course, you know, the dark ground underneath absorbs more radiation and heats up. So this is a game for June. And let's go back to May of 2017. Okay, this is May. Again, very similar. So May, June, right? Huge drop in snow cover um, compared to what we used to have. We can go back even another month. Okay, to, uh, so this is uh, April. Okay, so now there's more fluctuation. And if we go back to another month, Okay, now there's more variation and stuff. So, so March and April, not so much of a pattern, but May, more so, June, July, big, big drop. So May, June, big, big drop of snow cover. The Arctic getting darker, 
We're losing snow and ice in the Arctic. Thank you.